This afternoon we have John Guerra and the great Edie Falco, who is starring in John Guerra's extraordinary play, The House of Blue Leaves. Then the green latrine blew four flat tires and sinks, and I, I run to protect the car, and four cabs appear. And all my friends get into four different taxis. One of the touching dramaturgical impulses in the play is them breaking the fourth wall and saying, welcome to my living room, welcome mm -hmm. to my world. How did, how did you come up with I just, that? I didn't come up with it. I just, it happened when I was writing it. I realized that there was stuff in the, there was stuff, there was backstory in the play that the audience needed to know. The audience is, our, is the only friend that these lonely people have. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me not to have to find tortuous ways mm -hmm. to get exposition in mm -hmm. uh, over a cup of uh, a coffee or tea. Right. You know, st tell information that everybody on stage knew. Right. Right. The people in the audience didn't know, so I would fill them in, because right. you're my friend and I can trust you. Right. And it often doesn't work um, in the theater. It feels that sometimes if the author's calling attention to himself rather than the characters, but the characters are calling attention to their situation so beautifully. But I just said, Screw it. I just want to tell them. They need to know this. I want to get on with the scene. Suitcases spill open. Jackie Kennedy's wigs blow down 42nd Street. Cardinal Spellman hits me. Johnson screams and I hit him. I hit them all. When you have to break that fourth wall, is there a moment where you're sort of in and out of it, or are you in it completely? Are you treating the audience as another person in the scene? It feels to me almost like what goes on in my head all the time right. is the audience in my head that I'm con conversing with. Like, oh my God, that's the person who I saw that other time with, the, whatever, while I'm quietly walking down the street, is now going on out loud in front of an audience of people. Right. It feels like the most normal thing in the world to be able to do. Rather than actually having to quiet that voice, mm -hmm. I'm able to say it. Wow. And then I can go back to the person on stage and have the rest of the scene. It's psychotic. But then again, so is she. So <laughs> it's all working out very well for me. Um, but I'm loving it more than I ever thought I would, the whole audience participation piece of it. You need help. We, I found a nice hospital. By the sea. By the beautiful sea. It's, it's an old estate. No writer loves one character more than the other, but did you find a certain kind of emotional home in Bananas while you were writing it? Very much so. You like the place, Bananas. One of the impulses, that we have in America, we have this thing, I have a dream. You've got to have a dream. Uh, my dream is, trumps your life. You know, we mm. follow everybody's dream until the end. Yes, and the, the end, they, they win the Nobel Prize. They, you know, we clap. Yes. You know, we just say, fabulous, you followed your dream. Yay, yes. freeze frame. I wanted to show the people who didn't, want, didn't share in that dream, the wreckage of that dream. And she is, Bananas is the wreckage Mm -hmm. of Artie's dream. Mm -hmm. And at the end he realizes what he, that he is the one who's made it. He has, this is what happens to somebody when for 18 years you constantly neglect them and they are just rendered into non-beings, what they do to stay alive. Mm -hmm. And her mode is, her dream is she has everything. She wanted to marry Artie whom she loved and she wanted a kid whom she loved and she wanted to stay in this apartment in Sunnyside which she loves. That's her dream, she's in her dream mm -hmm. and everybody wants out of there. Let's get out of here. She gives me the weeping willies. Oh, no, I'm all right. I was just thinking how lucky we all are. You going off to California, me going off to the loony bin. It's a rest place. She's in the past tense. Everybody in the play is living in the f present or future tense. And Bananas is a person who was condemned to the past tense. How did you come up with these names, by the way? They name <laughs> themselves. They name themselves. Yes. This play was written, I mean, the first act of the play was, was written very quickly, and the second act took me almost over four and a half years to write, because I didn't have the, the technique to handle that many people on stage. Mm -hmm. But it played literally just, it came out of me. How do you survive the great depth and sadness of this role and go home and deal with your children and your life? It has never been easier. I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. The extent to which I am able to keep my life and my work separate, mm -hmm. both of them get richer. Because mm -hmm. there was a time when I thought in order to be a good actor, 
and to lose yourself in the role. It had to follow you home, and you had to be. And that, first of all, led to some very awful years of mm -hmm. personal life, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but also and and helps you feel like you're going crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I am far better at what I do now because I know at the end of the night I take off the wig and I go home and it really is gone. The experience from the second the play, the music at the beginning starts and it ends, I am completely 100% lost in this story, mm -hmm. in this character. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it's over, it's just over. It's mm -hmm. taken me this many years to get to this place. I didn't know I was heading here. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this was a place to want to be. Mm -hmm. But I. I'm so much more fully able to immerse myself in what I'm doing when I'm doing it when I know I'm not in danger of bringing it home with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.